Hi guys, welcome to the channel. On this video, I'm going to show you how to install a Sentinel uh, magnetic filter and it's uh, to connect to this combi boiler. Uh, and you, what you do is you fit it on the return pipe uh, uh, going to the boiler floor. So, as you can see, you can see the strong magnet that's on the inside of this. So, that strong magnet will collect all the debris and all the metal, all the sludge within the heating system. And uh, I think it's very important to have it uh, and it will clean up your system out and keep it very efficient when it's running so there you go see that that return pipe there so that return pipe goes back to the boiler so that's from all the radiators in the house going back into the boiler and the other side is the flow so the flow is going in all the radi into the radiators okay so what you need to do is we're going to take out all this pipe work because it's not needed in the filling loop because it's ready and turn a filling loop already in the system so we're going to take all that old filling loop out and then we're going to cut um, a section out and then fit the new uh, filter on there. Uh, it's just, you know it's a fairly easy job to do. It's um, you know cutting the pipe uh, with a pipe slicer, and then simply using the nuts to um, tighten them on with the olive and a bit of PTFT e tape. Okay, so need some good uh, spanners and adjustable spanners, small and big size. And um, you see that that nut there? You got to open that, and then once the uh, flow is closed, so drain the whole heating system. So you're not, not the boiler rubber with an expansion vessel, just the heating like all the radiators, because all the radiators are gonna have a return pipe coming back to the boiler. So just get everything drained out. And then uh, once it's all drained out, then it'll be easy to start cutting away. So there's the boiler, Baxi main Eco 30. Uh, make sure all the electrics are off. And uh, once all the water's come out and you're happy with it, and then, uh, you know, just um, start and start uh, looking at instructions if you need to. But in this instance, you're, you know, if you follow my video, you, you'll be fine. So can you can see it's got like a drain off on there as well. So at the bottom, uh, but at the end of the video, I'll show you um, how the drain off works. Um, literally, you just take the bottom piece off and then you can, you can like literally just put it on that nut to open the flow. So it's got an extra feature on this. So, you know, if you, you can imagine you accidentally left that open, it's still got the cap at the bottom with a rubber washer in it. So just in case you did leave it open, but that's an, an, a safety option on there. So you can turn, actually turn the eye station valve open. Can you see it? it's opening there? So once that's open, all the water will come out and all the sludge that's in the system will, will, will be filtered out. So it's a quick, you know, drain off system where you can do every couple of months or every six months. And then, you know, once you close it, you put the, the cap back on, but you'll see that at the end of the video anyway, uh, when, when it, once it's fitted. Um, yeah, so, you know, so the next stage is um, work out the size uh, pipe where you're going to go, but first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that pipe that's the, f the old filling loop and then take uh, the actual nut off. So, can you see I'm taking that nut off uh, from the return on the boiler? So, that nut uh, will allow me to have a bit more flexibility in the pipe work so I can pull it forward slightly once it's come off and then I can take the filling loop out. Uh, take that flexi pipe out and then what I'm going to do is put uh, an isolation valve on there So that isolation valve, um, you know, I don't need it. So it's always gonna be closed off But when I close it off, I'm gonna make sure there's an end cap on there as well So, you know, you might not need to do this in your in, in your on your boiler This is just an extra added bit I've done because you know I want to get rid of all that fitting loop because I've already got an uh, internal one fitted But you don't need to do this. Um, you know, if yours has just got a return pipe straight in You'll be absolutely fine. You just chop out a section and then uh, you're ready to go Okay, so what you need to do here, get a 22 mm copper pipe, uh, put it in, then you can determine how far it's going to go in to mark it. Uh, you know, because I, I know the instructions says a certain amount of millimeters, but just to make sure, check the depth of that pipe and see how much it's actually going in, because you don't want to cut the, the pipe too short, the last thing you want in doesn't fit. So I always do that on that, just to make sure everything's going to fit correctly, to be on the safe side, you know. Measure, like, like they say, measure twice, cut once. 
So, the, so there you go. So I'm, I'm making sure I'm add, uh, adding that mark there. I'm going to cut it. The exact amount that's going to go in, and the same from the bottom. So I, can, I know exactly where it's going to go. So as soon as I take that section out, the whole valve will fit nicely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So using a 22 mil pipe slicer, and mm -hmm. just make sure you take the arrow which direction you need to turn it mm -hmm. because. Um, you don't want to take it the wrong way, uh, you want to take it the, the right way and uh, it's, in, it's normally clockwise uh, but because it's close to the wall I'm going to use an uh, adjustable uh, um, plier because obviously uh, sorry, a set of grips, sorry, you know, just give it a bit extra of, um, leverage because it's quite difficult to leave with your hand uh, next, to, next to the wall it's a tight space so you have to use uh, you know, some sort of additional tool just to make sure it, it turns around Okay, so let's speed up the video in this bit. There you go, nice and quick. So once that comes out, um, you might need to give it a little bit of a knock uh, at the end. So when it when it turns, you'll, you'll know exactly when it's come loose. And then uh, just give it a little push and it all, it'll move. There you go, brilliant, it's all done. You can see, I give it a little nudge, so then you know, because um, the last bit is always a little bit difficult because it's pressed against you know the weight of it coming down. You take that section of pipe out, and there you can see the mark that I've got on there. So the mark so that's uh, I've done that? on the top section. So once that's cut out, and then we'll just fit it back into place. So before you do that, remember I mentioned about the ice station valve. So you don't need to do this part. This is just the added extra I'm doing to get rid of my filling loop. So I just put a bit, bit of PTF, you know, all the olives that I do, when I connect all my nuts and olives, I always use PTF tape. And uh, I use about 300 mil in terms of the length of when you're taking it out, rolling it out, and then, you know, do it in the direction of the nuts where it's going to close. And then put that back in. And then you just set some grips and your adjustable spanner to give it a nice, tight, snug, um, leak-free um, connection. Okay, so the main part's done now. So at this stage, you know, your pipes come out, you're ready to fit your uh, filter on now. Making sure everything's connected. Make sure your rubber washers are all in. So in this instance, we're going to use a fibre washer for the boiler at the top. I mean, the old one, you know, because it's open now, I'm going to put a brand new one in. 22mm uh, fibre washer. And then uh, that part will just simply fit back to the top and then connect it in. And, and the same at the bottom. So before we do that, so you know the filter, um, just check you know if the depth everything correct, and then I always like to put um, tighten the rubber and everything on first onto the actual filter. Make sure it's because you don't do that afterwards. It's a bit it's gonna be a bit fiddly to do. So just think about where you're gonna put it positioning as well. Uh, you know not too far out or left or right in the height. Make sure it's correct. And it, so I'm not putting PTF at this stage. I want to tighten my nut so the olive sticks. And then I'm going to take it off and put PTF because I don't like my olive moving up and down when I put PTF. I like to be solid, fixed in place, and then put it in. So I'm just going to give it a little tight, uh, tighten now. But I'm not sealing it at this point. I'm just tightening it so the olive sticks to the pipe. Okay. So once you know when you feel a nice grip on it, um, just open it back up, and now you can start adding your tape to it, your PTF tape. So that you'll see uh, that it's not moving now. So can you see it? So make sure your nut doesn't fall down. So I've put something in place so it doesn't fall down to the back of the worktop. Um, but can you see that olive is nice and solid now? And now you put your your tape off, your PTF PTFE tape on around. So the direction of wh which way your your nut's gonna turn. So this nut's gonna turn clockwise. So you gotta make sure you do the same direction of the tape as well. Yeah, about 300, 400 mil, and then wrap it around. Okay, so I'll put that in place. And see, you can see that olive is ni nicely squashed now against the valve at the bottom. Then, uh, you know, with, with your uh, fingers, just tighten it ever slightly and then, you, and then use your adjustment spanner. So 
So get it to a point where you think it's you know uh, snug, and then then use your grips to finalize it. You know that that tightness. So the grips you need to, you need to hold the valve as well. So because as you see, I'm tightening it, but then you can't rely on just you holding the whole filter. You get your grips hold, and then they hold the whole valve, and then turn it, and that gives it the, the extra you know that final touch. There you go. And it, it stops it moving all over the place. <coughs> and I'm going to do exactly the same with the top section of the pipe as well. I'm going to put the olive on and do a quick uh, first tighten it up first, and then put the tape on, and then and then your fiber wash as well at the same time. So remember, guys, this is your flow. It's not in, on your flow pipe. It has to be on your return pipe. So make sure you check your boiler and make sure the return pipe is, you know, that direction is from going from bottom to top. You cannot fit this filter anywhere. We're going the other way around. It's the water's flowing from the top going down. It's one direction only, and uh, you have to be careful. So this, you know, this boiler's uh, back is on the right for return. But sometimes you can have boilers with the flow and the return is the opposite way around. So just check with your boiler. Okay, <coughs> so. Give it a tight turn, make sure the olives are nice and tight. Get the grips out. And there you go. So I've made sure I've locked my olive now. It's nice and locked. And then I'm going to take it out and then put all my uh, PTFE tape on it. So remember, clockwise the direction of where uh, the nut is closing. So in this instance, it's going to be clockwise going downwards. There you go. See that olive not moving. Just wrap it round. I mean, I lost count how many I've done there, but it's about between 10 and 15 I normally do, and then uh, that should be enough, 10, 15 times. So I'll just use the average about 10, you'll be fine. Okay, fiber washer, the simply washer. put the fiber washer there and, and, and then slot the tape back in, I mean, the olive onto the valve, and then that's it, tighten it all up. Okay, so that's all fitted, nice and tight. Uh, just make sure you, all the nuts are, you know, tightened up nicely. Check your positioning of the filter, um, you know, left or right. Can you see I've done it slightly sl slanted, so I don't want it to stick out too much. So you can decide where your valves are. You, you know, it has to be operational, and for the next engineer, whoever comes next, or you know, it makes it easier to do service. There you go. Can you see on and off? So upwards, vertical is open, and horizontal is closed. So okay. So now we're gonna fill the system back up so open up the valves up valves of the boiler the flow and return and in the cold water uh, there you go so that's the flow and the return check for any leaks as you're going along so when the water's going to start circulating around and then start filling the, the boiler pressure now of the whole heating system uh, so get it up to you know one bar of pressure so 
and then you got to bleed all the radiators as well. So, so if you can fill up two, for example, part part time you do two, and then you bleed all the radiators, you'll come down to a nice one bar. You know, going back and forth. So there's about ten radi radiators here in this in example. So you'll have to go around bleeding the radiators, making sure the uh, water's filled before you put, turn the power on. Remember, this is before the power's turned on. You need to fill all the water. Okay, it's filling up now, as you can see. And then you get, I'm going to do it to uh, make sure it's set to about one bar. So the expansion vessel will take the pressure about one bar. So I set it one bar and then get everything up and running. And that's it. Check for any leaks once the, the boiler's on. Turn the electrics on and start start it all up. It's looking good. Yep. You know, make sure you check every single connection that you've altered. Make sure nothing's coming out. Okay, brilliant. That's done. So now this next stage is showing you how to, you know, do that um, s service part where you're cleaning the debris out. So you close the valve on the return, the bottom one, the top one, and then you can see the magnet. So always take the magnet out because if you don't take the magnet out, nothing will fall down into that drain off on the filter. Remember, I showed you in the start of the video, you got to open that bottom bit as well, that cap. So you open the cap. And then you got to open the isolation valve, um, and once you turn it, it will, it will all, the water will start coming out. So I take the cap off. The cap's the first part, and the second part is turning that little valve as well. So it's got a key. So you use the key, um, and then turn it. So before you turn it, you can either turn the so you make sure you turn this half at 45. So not all of it, half of it, just half. Not all of it, just half. Yeah, uh, at a 45, and then slowly, slowly open it. Okay, see, it starts spitting out. Look at that, it's all coming out now. There you go, it's all coming out. So anything that was in that filter, so the, you know, heating. I've run this heating system for about an hour now, uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And already you'll start to see some uh, metal parts and debris come out. And you know, and, um, you'll see when I show you the ball in a second. Close the valve off and then fill it back in. So you bleed it, so open that up and then put that cover back on. Look at that. Look at the, look at the color of the water. And can you see those, those little parts that have come out? That's just after 45 minutes to an hour of having heating on. You know, put your heating on and leave running, and then uh, put the magnet back in. Uh, and then in the next video, I'll show you how much is actually attached to the magnet. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and take care. Have a good one.